we'll go see Muay Thai fights. That's, what That's we all you get is stand up. Yeah. And, yeah, and we need to clarify too, though. It's it's look, I'm a I'm a diehard fan of, of watching the striking game. I, I love K1. I love I love uh, it's Showtime. I love Glory. But what I don't like about him is the lack of elbows. And that's what we see he man. You don't understand how amazing and how awesome a fight becomes when you incorporate the elbows. When you see a punch, kick, a knee to the head, and then just a vicious elbow slicing across the forehead. It's it's a thing of beauty, man. It is such a beautiful thing to watch. Well, why don't we introduce a guy like that sitting here with us right now from Line Fight. What's happening, man? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. So how excited are you about this fight coming on Friday and Access TV as well? Yeah, we're absolutely thrilled. It's the first time uh, Muay Thai's ever been shown nationally in America, so we're, we're thrilled with that. And to be able to have Yats and Clyde, who many consider to be the greatest Muay Thai fighter of his generation, to headline the card is just uh, it's an amazing accomplishment for us in two years. Now, from the last time that we had you on the show, which was back last summer, you joined us full side, if I remember yes. correctly. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, and I asked you, I said, how fast do you see this this sport growing or the organization growing? And you see it now growing more, and it's going to grow even more now with you being on television. It's great. Yeah, we're just, uh, I think we're in the right place at the right time. And, and as uh, Joey and Phil pointed out, you know, Muay Thai, it is the most exciting stand-up fight form there is. And when you throw in the elbows, it's a game changer. You see how... The UFC and MMA has evolved with with elbows and the clinches and uh, having a sport with the rich tradition that we do and to be able to, to bring that to fight fans. And we've really tried to stress with, with, with Jen and everybody to tap into that MMA market because they love the stand-up fighting. They do. A lot of MMA fighters come to the fights as well. Absolutely. Packed so, house every time. That's every right. Time. If you and want to see the fight, I'm going to announce it again. 702-365-9200 to win a pair of tickets to come see this amazing fight card happening this Friday night. Awesome. And what a what an amazing fight card. And you talked about Yats and Clyde, who, who he is. And as Michael Cervello, you heard it. He, he said it himself. Cervello said that this is probably the greatest Thai fighter in his generation. Um, people who, who got to watch the Contender Asia, he was the one who won the Contender Asia. He steamrolled through the competition. You know, he fought John Wayne Park, I believe, in the end. And, 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 and finished John Wayne Park, who's one of the best in the world as well. So this guy's a living legend. But in addition to that, you've got... Kevin Ross, the return of Las Vegas, is own assassin. Ross, the assassin, one of the most gutsiest, heart-filled, just passionate fighters you'll ever see. This guy is he's, he's a walking, talking highlight reel, man. How 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 excited do you have Kevin on the card? Well, we're thrilled. We were able to sign Kevin and Tiffany, and uh, I've seen many of Kevin's fights, and you're absolutely right. I've never seen a guy that just lays it out there, and he's called out everybody. He's fought the best tie fighters in the world. I mean, nothing but respect for him. We're thrilled to have him a part of Lions Fight. And Tiffany, too. She's she's, she's like the, 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 the hottest thing in women's Muay Thai right now. She is. You know, and when she fought uh, Jerry Seitz, a lot of people didn't really know what to think of her. But the way she the way she controlled Jerry Seitz in that last fight really, really converted her, really put her at that top echelon of American Muay Thai fighters. Well, speaking of Tiffany, she's on the line right now. Uh, first women's bantamweight and WC women's bantamweight champion. What's going on? Tiffany? Hey guys, how's it going? Good, good, good. How does it feel to be the first woman to be signed to a Lion Fight Muay Thai in its history? It's, it's phenomenal. It's, it's a great feeling. It's just, it's, I just want to say thanks to Scott. Well, first off, congratulations to the Multi Fight contract and also winning 2012 Muay Thai Authority North American Breakout Fighter of the Year. I mean, you've done you've done that. You, you've you're the first one to sign a Multi Fight contract. I mean, tell us about what 2012 was for, like for you. It's just the beginning. I mean, 2012 was a, it was a huge year for me. Um, I feel like I really uh, developed as a, as a professional, and you know, it's just the start of, of my career. Um, but I definitely put an exclamation point on it, and I think I showed fight fans and, and the Muay Thai community that um, you know I'm I'm not just another girl who's going to come in and fight. I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm going to come and I'm going to fight hard. I'm going to attract a good crowd and. Um, hopefully help help promote Muay Thai in America. Now I know you you train with Black House and Team Noguera, correct? Yeah, correct. Both um, in LA and in San Diego. So when you go there and you're doing the sparring, do you spar with the guys? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> What's that like? Um, it's fun. I mean, I definitely get pushed. No one, no one else pushes me like those guys do. That's for sure. Wow, so do you, like, have a hard time finding dates because, like, guys are intimidated by you? 
has your soccer ba- background helped with Muay Thai? Uh, I think it's helped a lot, actually. Uh, I just, I've just i always liked to kick things, you know, soccer and karate, and so um, I think I can 
blend my my kicking styles, you know, my karate style, and then like especially with the leg kicks, you'll see more of like a downward chop or like kind of like running start a little bit sometimes if I can load up on a big one. I think just like hip movement and footwork has definitely um, the soccer footwork has definitely played a big part into the way I move in the ring as well. Yeah, because we've seen that in MMA with the the Brazilian fight, fighters who formerly played soccer, like a Jose Aldo. And with those just devastating leg kicks that come from it. Pretty cool. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Well, Tiffany, we wish you all the best coming up this Friday night. Going up against Alexis Rufus. And uh, how do you feel about fighting the coming event? Um, it's, it's an honor. I'm, I'm stoked. I couldn't be more thrilled. On Texas television. That's just very cool. Very cool. Wait, real quick, one more thing from you. Uh, you I just want to know, uh, you... You know, Phil asked you about going over to MMA, and you said you got a lot of opportunities in Muay Thai, and you want to accomplish your goals there first. W- what are your goals in Muay Thai? You know, I want to. You know, I think I've proven that I'm one of the best fighters, you know, in the world in my in my weight division, and um, I want to maintain that title. And you know, if I get an opportunity to fight for another title in a in a different weight class or uh, through a different sanctioning body, then then yeah, just start collecting some titles. When you said a different weight class, is that up or down? Uh, we'll see. All right. <laughs> Options <laughs> open. I like it. Yeah, yeah. the door open. Right, exactly. All right, well, we'll see you this Friday night, Tiff. Yes, you will. Thank you guys so much for having me on. Uh, thanks Thank for you. joining us inside the fight corner. Now, I, I don't wait, know. Wait, real quick. Did you ask her permission to call her Tiff? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I don't know if she's cool with that. Yeah, this Joe always ready to answer. No, I, I, I waited until she got the line. opportunity that Bob has got. Oh, hold on. I <laughs> waited until she was off the line. I'm, I'm doing this as a friend. I'm coming out to you just I know, I know, confidentially just between us two because I don't want you to be walking through the crowd and settle. you get a you get a buzz. So I'm sure this. she likes Tiff more than time. Bob, how, so. how about this, Scott? If at all Tiffany walks up to you before the fights and say, which guy called me Tiff? <laughs> <laughs> point out Joe. I'm going to point oh, him out. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> That's okay. We can, you know, I'll, I'll talk to her about it. I'll say, listen, I'm the guy. I'll own up to it. Well, I'm the guy. Listen, I don't need Joe to fight my battles. We we watched uh, we watched her fight when she fought Jerry Seitz, yep. and, you know, Jerry had a lot of hype coming into the fight, and we all expect, we didn't really know what Tiffany was all about, and we found out very quickly that she's just, a, she is a, a world kicker. <laughs> I don't want to say world uh, kicker. Uh, <laughs> world kicker. World right. butt but kicker. If it's any, any indication of how uh, how excited people are about this fight card coming up on Friday night, we had five pairs of tickets after the break. They are all gone already. That's great. That's going to be great, so I'm excited. You're supposed to leave some for me, man. You're supposed to leave no, we don't want you there because we'll you're just... We'll take care of you. You're going to call, Tiffany gonna call Billy out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find Tiffany and point him, point him out to her. That's the one. We've still got a lot of tickets available, too, guys. And uh, we'd love to get everybody to come out and see it. This historic card it really is the first time Muay Thai has ever been shown on national TV. First time the odds of Goliath has fought in the uh, in the United States. And anybody that's seen our fights, we don't know if it's going to be the Blue Corner or the Christine Toledo that does an amazing job. Always a, a blast. Really looking forward to this. And that now that it's on Access TV, I mean, it's not just Vegas that's privy to this anymore. We all get to see it. Yeah, and a huge shout out to Access. I mean, Mark Cuban, Andrew Simon, these guys that took a chance on this. They, they, you know, they really believe in what they're doing. You know, and at the end of the show, he's going to see that uh, the crew is uh, a terrific group up there. So we're looking forward to it. No, yeah. I've, I've been to a couple of shows and they're great. And you got Michael Chavello and Pat Millett is calling it. I mean, Pat has been so excited on Twitter all week. I don't know if you've known. Like, he is just so excited about the possibility of Muay Thai really coming back full-fledged here in America. And with the card that you got on on Friday night, like, it is, it's like a red carpet rollout for Seriously. it. Seriously. It really is. It, you guys are in for a real treat for these fights. And one, one person we haven't talked about, too, another legend, you, you know, he, uh, Malapet. Malapet was was former WBC and WMC world champion. Has like guy, a million fights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Him and Dwayne fought back in the day, Bangalore, and just an awesome. I mean, this guy's fought everyone, puts on a war, um, punches and bunches, knees, elbows, kicks, vicious clinch game. I mean, he, any one of those guys could have been the, the, the main event, you know? Absolutely. And, and to, to roll it out with, with all these stars, this is going to be a special night. Yeah, Remy and Shane. I mean, this, it's good, good fights on Saturday night, on Friday night. I'm really looking forward to this. 
And Saturday night. And too. Saturday night, too. That's right. Another great weekend. This is two weekends in a row of just back to back, nonstop violent action. <laughs> oh, my skin is just tingling. <laughs> You're scaring me, Phil. You're scaring me. <laughs> Contain yourself there, kid, son. Uh, yeah, you got the Muay Thai fights on Friday night. Oh, my God, it's going national. And then you're going to have the UFC on Fox Saturday night, which is free. Free. Free, free, free. Free. Unless, of course, you come and see it live and you didn't win tickets, you just mail them. <laughs> you know, but, uh, but yeah, this is great. It's been a good all great week of fights. It really has been. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and Scott, moving forward, you know, you're coming out, you're basically coming out swinging with this card. You know, your debut on Access, you're, 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 you're letting it be known. You're making your presence felt. What, what's next? Where do you go from this? Who are some of the big names in, in, in kickboxing and Muay Thai that you'd like to bring and have fight for Lion Fight Promotions? Uh, I got a call from John Wayne Carr this morning in Australia. I had lunch with uh, Michael Shabala. He had uh, put us in touch. Uh, we, uh, you know, Simon Marcus, we'd love to get him back. Martin Levin, another guy we've looked at. We've looked at Sam Chai, the other Thai fighter. Uh, you know, there's, there's so many great fighters that we're looking at. Our business plan has always been to develop American Muay Thai and create our own stars, but I think we have to do that by bringing in the best international talent we can. And we couldn't make a, a stronger statement than bringing in Yad Supply and Gregory Choplin, three-time European champion. He's won, I think, uh, two of... He's French, right? French in our last card. Yeah. 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 He's a beast. Uh, he's a beast, and he's big. I saw him today. He looks big. He's I was going to say, he... he, he uh, He's usually fights a weight class above Yad Sinclair, right? 65, and Yad is usually 60 or 54. But he had this opportunity, and we had this opportunity to uh, uh, to, to, to fight Yad Sinclair, and, you know, you don't get these opportunities many times. So uh, it was something he jumped at. He actually canceled another fight to take this. And since people have kind of a knowledge of, of uh, uh, Gregory, you know, part of our, our job here is to expose Yad Supply, who he is, what he's about. We're actually doing an open workout tomorrow night at the El, uh, Las Vegas Athletic Club at Fozzy on uh, Lake Mead and Rainbow at 6.30. So if you want to come see him, do a light workout, meet him, get an autograph, please feel free to come by. We'd love to see you. Say that address again for everybody. Uh, it's on Lake Mead and Rainbow. It's the LVAC and the Fozzy Sports right in front. They've got the, the boxing ring and so forth. I don't know what the accent actual street address is, but uh, you, it's the biggest building there. You, you can't, can't miss it. it if you're on the freeway. It's 95 in Rainbow. You just get off right there. You wrap right around. It's on the corner. And right when you walk in the entrance, you'll see the Fosse Gym. It's Apollo I know where gym. that is, yeah. Apollo Seb Sebastian. I'm getting hold, I'm getting numbers held up. Like I can't read. Tell, tell me. Six, oh, six. Is that 630? Yeah, I was wondering what that was. I thought that was an address. It's like there was 10 numbers in there. It was were you like adding? I doing like four plus two minus one. And then the semicolon. <laughs> yeah, semicolon. <laughs> Six thirty. Ah. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. You guys, you guys missed it. She's kicking my butt over here. That's great. And we also want to remind the fans as well, not only tomorrow night, but Friday night, you come down and see us live at the Hot Rock from 3.30 to 6.30 and meet all these up-and-coming stars of Muay Thai. So we invite all of you fans to come down to the Hot Rock on Friday night. It's going to be awesome. Going to be fun, definitely. You yeah. know what, you know what else is uh, is going on tonight, though, too, that we didn't even mention uh, about? Oh, yeah. Like, I, I, I'm shocked that we didn't even talk about this. Like, well, we, we haven't talked about this in weeks. Episode 1. Episode 1 finally happens tonight. The, the new season of The Ultimate Fighter, completely revamped, redone. Very excited about it. Sonnen is just going to make, what, six weeks of pure entertainment, in my, my opinion. He's going to make this fun, but he's also there to actually be a coach. And from what I hear... This season is off the charts. I know we hear that a lot, and I mean, except for last season, I really was never been disappointed in the Ultimate Fighter. But this season, I think, is is going to take the cake. Yeah, and from what I understand too, it's going to be like no other season we've ha we've seen before. And, and I don't mean I know you hear that as well. You'll never say like that. But I mean the hijinks, the shenanigans. From what I understand, they really tone those down. And they're sh the, the the whole way it was shot, the whole way they're telling the stories, they're doing a whole different look, feel, uh, in, in final product of the Ultimate Fighter. So I don't even know if we're going to get 100 percent of Chael sh shenanigans just because they're going to be doing such a great job of telling the story of these guys and not talking about, you know, uh, who's a crazy guy when he gets drunk and who does something stupid, but who are these guys? What brought them to this point? You know, really getting us engaged and understanding the people that, that, that make up the cast of The Ultimate Fighter. And I'll tell you what, someone asked me on Twitter today, 
who do I think is going to be a better coach after the season? And honestly, I think after this season's done, both of these guys are going to come off of, as two of the greatest coaches in the history of Tough because they, they, they're they both so well-spoken, they're articulate, they come from camps where they've got awesome coaches, so they understand what it means like to have a great coach. They understand the philosophy behind coaching and behind the sports themselves, so I think they're both going to do a phenomenal job. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for this season of Tough. Um, it starts tonight, two hours. I think, well, on the East Coast, it's running right now. Yeah. Here on the West Coast, if you don't have DirecTV, it's starting a little bit or in an hour or so. It's a two-hour event tonight. To and it's going to – what a good idea for the for FX and the UFC to move it to Tuesday night. Justified is just an amazing show. You're gonna I just – dude, I'm in season two right now, Justified. I love it. And I think it was great last week making a cameo appearance in Justified was Donald Cowboy Cerrone playing a fighter but he did it last week and i think this week it, 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 i think it's timed very well and then by the time next season comes it'll be before sons of anarchy which you know does amazing ratings so i think this season of tough is going to change the whole aspect of what we've known we love it and it doesn't stop there tuesday night friday night saturday night, and thursday night bellator, bellator. yes bellator king mo fighting king mo, mo. mo. <laughs> want to see my boy do it and then, and then, also remember it's a two-hour premiere tonight, which starts at eight o'clock. Yep. And then next week we go back to its normal time. Yeah, you're doing it. You're doing it. No, what are you doing again? Also, still haven't done a bumper. No, he just did it. I think. I think that was Billy's bumper. That sounds like a. Oh, thanks, Billy. Uh, for tomorrow morning, if you guys want to get up nice and early, the UFC 158 pre-fight conference, that's the fight between George St. Pierre and Nick Diaz, will have a press conference scheduled. Okay, wait, what are the odds? Yeah, what are the odds? That's what, that was my question. What are the odds? Like, freaking George, like, uh, he always, like, just wants to show up and do all this stuff on freaking... No, what are the odds that he shows up? Yeah, no. <laughs> wait, does Nick, does Nick Diaz show up to the press conference? Uh, he will. You think so? Yeah, he's not going to do it. Plus, he still has the commission to go before after his, uh, I guess, suspension ends on February 4th. So he still has to get that squared away. So I don't think he'll want to get on anyone's bad side for doing that. Uh, and also, again, you guys mentioned that uh, Top FX on FX is tonight. It starts at 8 p.m. But next week, it will be in its regular tight slot at 9. Uh, also, we all saw that uh, Nathan Belfort defeated Michael Bisping. He lost out on his title shot. And then Belfort went on afterwards to call out Sean Jones. Well, add something else to the mix. Luke Rockhold, the strike force middleweight champion, has called out Belfort as a poor money fight. So let's see what happens with that. I don't know what do you guys think about that fight. Uh, both Joey and I just looked at each other and cringed. It's, that, yeah. yeah. That's, that's no, nobody that's has a warm up fight with Vitor Belfort. I, lo- I like Luke. I do too, man. but I like him as a person. Hanging out with him is cool. As a fighter, is awesome, but it's like, you know. Take, take small bites, you know. Baby steps, but Yeah, that's more like a title elevator, if anything. It, it's, like, it's like I said, I don't know what I was thinking betting on Bisbee. When you look at Vitor Belfort, the guy has, seriously, he's had six sites since returning to the UFC, and his only two losses are to Jones and to Anderson Silva. So the guy, if you're not the best of the best of the best, Vitor's knocking your ass out. I still think, though, I, I still think if he makes a run at John Jones, he has a shot. He wanted that fight with a broken hand. We, we never saw that explosion. And he almost step. broke Jones' arm. Yeah, but, but but you know, but what he's known for, what he does so well, we never saw out of him because he came in there injured. So I still want to see what happens when Vitor unloads, you know? Yeah, because that could be trouble for anybody. Uh, also, Rick Hall, I don't know if you guys saw this on Twitter and Facebook yesterday. He uh, classy. He was classy about it. He mentioned that a nameless sponsor would reduce payment based on his performance in the, the loss of Bellator 85. However, because of social media, because of the fact that everybody went and can, you know, say, hey, that's wrong. you got to pay this guy. He's a former Olympian. The sponsor is actually uh, ponied up and he's not going to pay him. Did you read what the sponsor said, though? They're expecting <laughs> That was some cold stuff, man. Like, like, not only that, dude, but wait a second. You're going to sit there and you're going to criticize some guy on his performance against a, a world-class athlete like Michael Chandler 
when, dude, I would wonder what Michael Chandler would do to that promote with that guy. And regardless, that'd be fun to see. That's what they should do. Put Chandler against him. <laughs> but regardless, though, you, your brand was seen. Regardless how this guy no, does, it, it did a lot. Your, it did good your for Your brand him. was there. Was it was it had one million impressions or how many people you know what watched nine hundred over a million at, at its peak. You know, so it, you got the value regardless of what this guy did. But his whole thing was, I don't want to be associated with someone who does so horrible or looks so. I mean, like was, a loser. Yeah, it was bad. Man. Yeah, it was bad. But not only that is, is this guy got more notoriety now for doing this. You know, this garbage thing. Really, it's, it's a garbage move to do to a promoter for, for for somebody to do. And he sits there, and now pe- more people know about him because no one knew about him then. No one knew anything about him. You guys, I wish you guys could all see this because Phil was very passionate. He I'm, I'm like, upset about he it. He was sort of like the president addressing a terrorist I hand gesture. He was hand talking. He's like, this is a garbage move with the hand gesture like he's karate chopping terrorists. I was mad. Yeah. I still am. I'm, I'm, I'm staying away from this. I didn't have one today. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have one today. So Phil, Phil takes a, a monster and why, uh, shoots it by energy and washes it with a monster. It is a monster. I just have one last thing for you in case anyone's paying attention to the MMA Fight Corner's picks. Right now, overall, after the UFC up and down at back seven and after UFC 155, currently leading the MMA Fight Corner picks is Joey Farner. Roar! It's Google fans. In second place, Billy Mero with 12 correct picks. Heidi Fang rolls in at third with 11 correct picks. Uh, Phil, you're in at fourth and 10 picks, and so Armando has it. nine correct picks. What happened, Phil? <laughs> But I think you're yeah. being you dancing back and forth for first and second place this whole time. I wanted to give Billy, you know, just a couple of week head start. Kind of like you broke the clocks right twice a day. And that's coming from Phil. Phil, your picks were so dead on at one point. And yeah. then what's going on here? You fall hey, off the map. I got a day job. They were dead on, and now they're just dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a day job. Well, but listen, we tell everybody this Friday night, Hard Rock. Live fights, Muay Thai, come down, hang out with us. We'd like to thank our guests, Clay Weida, Scott Kent, and Tiffany Van Susan, especially you, the fight fan. And for all the news about MMA Fight Corner, visit MMAFightCorner.com. And for all your breaking news and exclusive interviews as well, we'll see you right back here this Friday at 5, live from the Hard Rock. Till then, be cool. MMA Fight Corner, Fox Sports Radio.